Tonight at 5, how a new safety feature on Apple Watches and iPhones is causing some headaches for 911 dispatchers. Plus, a construction crane accident sends two workers to the hospital and causes an hour-long traffic backup in Florida. And the FBI now joins the investigation as police search for the person or people responsible for shooting up power substations in North Carolina. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. New tonight, we're learning more about why a DeForest Parish staffer is facing child sexual assault charges. Our Braden Ross got a copy of the criminal complaint, and she joins us in the studio with the details. Braden? Yeah, the 17-year-old victim says it started with innocent text messages, but then things got uncomfortable. Rajnal Ramat is charged with child enticement and sexual assault of a child by a person who works with children. The victim, a member of his church, says she had inappropriate sexual contacts with Ramat both in person and online multiple times. Court records say it started in July, shortly after Ramat arrived from Pakistan to work in the Diocese of Madison. The victim alleges that text messages got more explicit over time. According to her, Ramat told her he had a, quote, countdown until she turned 18 because he knew it was illegal. She says they met up in local parks several times where the inappropriate sexual contact took place. And the court has set a $5,000 cash bail for Rimat today and no contact with the victim. Online records show he is still at the Dane County Jail. Braden, thank you. Let's get a check on your certified most accurate forecast. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti on the weather patio. Gary? Susan, we had some slippery roads this morning, especially north of Madison, where temperatures are a little bit below freezing. And there was some freezing drizzle and some very light snow. But as we take a look at visible cloud track right now, the clouds have stayed all day. Uh, that hasn't changed, but there's not much in the way of precipitation. Looks like some flurries mainly north of the Dells, a few more flurries out to the west in Iowa and Minnesota heading in our direction. Can't rule out a couple of flurries this evening, but six hour future track radar really doesn't even pick those up very well. So nothing uh, very heavy or widespread that should cause travel problems. High temperatures today mainly in the 30s, although Janesville did top out at 41. Milwaukee hit 42 and Kenosha was at 43. To the north, though, the Baraboo Dells report only stayed at 32. And you can see right now temperatures are mainly above freezing, although again, the Baraboo Dells are Airport at 31 and 32 in Camp Douglas, but across Dane County, we're seeing temperatures in the middle 30s, 34 in Madison, 35 in Perry, 35 in uh, Mount Horeb, and 35 degrees in Cross Plains. Look for skies to be mostly cloudy this evening. Uh, just an outside chance for a flurry. Temperatures will drop into the lower 30s by late evening. Later on, we'll take a look at the potential for maybe some minor snow accumulations as we head from Thursday night into Friday. All right, Gary, thank you. New at 5, a man convicted of killing a Columbia County man has been sentenced to life in prison. 45-year-old Jason Kayeski pleaded guilty to first-degree intentional homicide last week for his role in the death of Keith, Keith Wolf in 2019. He was accused of breaking into Wolf's home and shooting him. Kayeski will be eligible for extended supervision, at, supervision after 30 years, but before he even starts to serve this life sentence, he has to finish another sentence that he is currently serving. Police say a person was found dead in a vehicle after a fiery crash on Madison's west side early this morning. Officers were sent to the intersection of Pleasant View Road and Flagstone Drive around 1 a.m. They arrived to find a vehicle on fire. Investigators determined the vehicle hit a light fixture and utility pole. Police have not provided any information about the victim's identity. An investigation is ongoing. Police are looking for a suspect. They say hit a man in the head with an axe before robbing him. Officers say a 54-year-old man was walking in the 1700 block of Fear Road Sunday when the suspect grabbed him and demanded his wallet. The suspect allegedly followed him to his motel on East Town Boulevard and hit him in the head with that small axe. The victim suffered non-life-threatening injuries and was taken to a hospital. Hang-ups and false alarms are often just part of the job for 911 dispatchers, but something different is happening in Columbia County. They're getting false alarms from a new safety feature on Apple Watches and iPhone 14 when people fall while they're skiing or simply getting off a tractor. It's led to over a dozen calls with some leading to fire, EMS, and law enforcement being dispatched unnecessarily. The emergency SOS Apple setting is a crash detection feature, but unlike the ones in cars like OnStar, it's a lot more sensitive. And dispatchers say if it happens on your phone, the best thing you can do is stay on the line. If the person doesn't stay on the line, we're not able to make contact with them. Our response to it is we have to treat every call as if it's real that there is some type of immediate danger to their life or their safety.
The Columbia County Sheriff's Office also recommending Apple users turn off the emergency setting when they know they'll be engaging in high impact but low risk activities. Two people were hospitalized today after an accident involving a construction crane on a Florida highway. Investigators say the crane was lifting some equipment when the ground underneath shifted. It then hit a cherry picker and top and tipped over. Two workers were on the crane when it fell about 30 feet. One is recovering covering. The other is in critical condition. Three firefighters and a police officer were also hurt after a rescue truck was involved in a crash while responding to the scene. Here in Wisconsin, candidates are already lining up to get on the April ballot, and that includes a special election for a suburban Milwaukee Senate district. That's a seat which will determine whether Republicans have a supermajority in that chamber. Political reporter Will Keneally joins us with more. Will? So State Representative Janelle Branchen has thrown her hat into the ring for that open seat, which will likely change the focus of the race, as she is well known among Republicans for her work criticizing and investigating the results of the 2020 election. And she's already running in against at least one other Republican, the state rep from a neighboring district, Dan Canodal. UW-Milwaukee political expert Mordecai Lee says it could be a contentious primary between the two. I think this is a real race. Uh, I, I think this is going to be a Donnybrook. Uh, I think it's going to be no holds barred, knockdown, drag out fight. I wouldn't be surprised if this race sets a record for how much is spent in a Republican primary for state Senate. And Lee says that could even be a million dollars. So that's on the Republican side, but we don't quite know who the Democrat will be to replace retiring or who will run to replace retiring Senator there, Alberta Darling. The Democratic rep from the area declined uh, to run, leaving that field empty of what Lee considers to be top tier candidates. And he added that we will see an interesting effect next spring because that race is the only partisan race on the ballot. We could see Democrats cross over and vote in that Republican primary. Will, thank you. The candidates in Georgia's runoff Senate race are making their closing arguments before tomorrow's election. Skylar Henry now with more from Atlanta. Democratic Senator Raphael Warnock began his final day of campaigning with members of the Teamsters Union in Atlanta. And I promise you guys, if you stand up with me just one more day, I'll stand up for you for the next six years. Later, he held a rally at Georgia Tech, urging students to get out to vote. It was really exciting. Lots of momentum and energy. Yes. Very motivating. Republican challenger Herschel Walker continued his Evict Warnock bus tour Monday, stopping at a restaurant in Flowery Branch, Georgia, and a pool hall in Dawsonville. Now we're working on turnout, turnout, turnout. Walker needs big turnout to win. The way the government's going right now, in the wrong direction, we need somebody that's got our back. Though Democrats will control the next Senate, a Warnock win would give the party more leverage in deciding the makeup of key committees, an easier path to confirming judges, and more wiggle room in close votes. Georgia election officials say more than a quarter of active voters in the state have already cast ballots in early voting. But there are concerns about turnout because of heavy rain in the forecast. Georgia's senior senator, Democrat John Ossoff, says Georgians are used to obstacles. Even last week, when made to wait in line for two or three hours to vote, I have seen how determined Georgians are to exercise their constitutional rights. He believes they'll show up on Tuesday. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Atlanta. Today, the Supreme Court took up another case pitting free speech against gay rights. The case involves a Colorado web designer who says creating pages for same-sex weddings conflicts with her religious beliefs. Attorneys argue that artists, unlike other vendors, are protected by free speech. But Colorado law bars businesses from discriminating based on race, gender, sexual orientation, religion, and other grounds. Several justices engaged in hypothetical after hearing the arguments. How about people who don't believe in interracial marriage? Or about people who don't believe that disabled people should get married? Suppose someone offers the service of writing customized wedding vows. Can they be forced to write uh, vows or speeches that espouse things they loathe? 
The now conservative majority court has been receptive to claims of religious freedom, but in 2018, the panel made a plea for civility that future cases like these would be resolved with tolerance on both sides. Madison got a perfect score on an LGBTQ plus inclusivity uh, recent report. The Human Rights Campaign issued its annual municipal equality index today, scoring cities on how inclusive they are to the LGBTQ plus community. But as our Andrew Banstra found out, there is always room for growth. Andrew? Madison often identifies itself among the most diverse and inclusive communities in America, and the Human Rights Campaign's report from this morning backs that claim. The report we found cleared many metrics, but also shows there's still a lot of work to be done, specifically for Madison's LGBT plus homeless and transgender populations. Steve Starkey from Outreach, a Madison-based LGBTQ plus advocacy group, said that, says that the score is perfect depending on who you ask. It kind of depends on who you are. And it probably depends on what zip code you're in. <laughs> um, I think for, um, for white people, that are middle class, probably, um, you know, it's a, it's a score of 100. Um, if you are a person of color or disabled or transgender, um, you know, probably not so much. Along with Madison, Milwaukee scored a perfect 100 out of 100, as did Racine for the first time ever. Meanwhile, Kenosha was the only Wisconsin city to score below the national average. They earned 51 out of 100 possible points. At 6, we'll dive deeper into what specifically Madison is doing well and where we can improve. Andrew, thank you. When is our next possible chance of snow? Gary has the details next at 5. Plus, North Carolina police are still looking for the suspect who they say intentionally destroyed destroyed two power substations, sending tens of thousands into darkness. And coming up tonight at 6, where you can get your hands on thousands of vintage vinyls that have captured the sound of the 60s in Wisconsin. And a down day to start the week on Wall Street. The Dow Jones falls more than 482 points. The NASDAQ tumbles 221 and a half. The S&P 500 loses almost 73. We'll be right back. Take your bathroom from old to new, from outdated to the modern shower of your dreams in as little as one day. Just call Mad City Baths, Wisconsin's number one remodeler and trusted local source for American-made baths, tub to shower conversions and walk-in tubs. Plus, it's our end of year savings event. Receive 75% off installation of a new bath or shower, and we install year round. But purchase now to get $750 in Mad City cash for future home improvements. Pick up the phone, schedule a free estimate. With our price lock guarantee, we'll guarantee your price for one year and receive a free $75 restaurant.com gift card within home estimate. Plus, call during this program for great financing, no interest and no payments till 2026. From Madison throughout South Central Wisconsin, call 608-729-4466. That's 608-729-4466. Hey, do you want to join our rewards program? Collect hot dog points to unlock access to our VIP lounge. That doesn't seem very... Rewarding. With a BMO Savings Builder account, you get a cash reward for every month you save. Wait, so you're going to reward me for saving my own money? You got it. A little incentive to help you get into the habit of saving. That sounds great, but do you have VIPs? Yeah, absolutely. We call them customers. When a bank helps you make real financial progress, that's the BMO effect. It's a fact. Two out of three Americans who qualify for Medicare do not receive all the benefits they deserve. You could be missing out. Now, Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield introduces a free Medicare plan checkup to make sure you receive all the benefits you qualify for in 2023. Call 1-855-597-0884 today and receive extra benefits for a $0 monthly premium. Benefits like dental, vision, hearing, and prescription drugs. And to help you stay healthy at home, you can have free prescription drug delivery, online doctor visits 24-7, and free exercise classes. 
You can even receive money towards over-the-counter health items. Call 1-855-597-0884 today and feel confident you have all the benefits you deserve for 2023. You can receive extra benefits for a $0 monthly premium, like dental, vision, hearing, and prescription drugs. Call 1-855-597-0884 and make sure you're not missing out. A phone feature created to increase safety is causing chaos for the Columbia County Emergency Response Services. We look at how the component is supposed to function and how the Sheriff's Office is planning to handle the malfunction. That's tonight at 6. A Madison mom says her special needs child was injured permanently when her school didn't follow a plan for her care. I knew that there was something very wrong. Now she's set to sue the Madison School District. If it was your child, would you feel comfortable? News 3 Now investigates tonight at 10. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. Rental company Hertz has agreed to pay $168 million in settlements to former customers for falsely reporting vehicles were stolen. The case has sometimes resulted in people being arrested, held at gunpoint by police, and spending time in jail while the false reports were worked out. Systemic flaws by Hertz are allegedly to blame, including not recording payment or rental extensions, failing to track its own vehicle inventory, and failing to correct false reports to police. A Hertz spokesman says the company is not currently taking specific steps to prevent these instances from happening in the future. The FBI is now investigating who intentionally shot a North Carolina power system. Mike Valerio tells us the attack caused millions of dollars in damage and plunged around 40,000 people into darkness. It's an attack upending the lives of tens of thousands of people. Law enforcement in Moore County, North Carolina confirmed an intentional and targeted attack on power substations with the damage caused by gunfire. No group has stepped up to uh, acknowledge or accept that uh, they're the ones that done it. So, yeah, I call them cowards. This the individual that done this. It was targeted. It wasn't random. Officials said the person or people who opened fire knew exactly what they were doing. Equipment at two substations vandalized and a gate from one substation taken off its hinges. Got no way to heat because we don't have a fireplace. And then we don't have no gas grill or anything like that. So we just stranded. Around 40,000 people initially lost power Saturday night as temperatures hovered around freezing. Among the emergency ripple effects. Our medical calls have increased due to people. People might be being on oxygen or having other medical um, devices that, that require power. The local utility said Thursday could be when all power is restored. A countywide curfew and emergency declaration is in effect, while federal and state law enforcement keep investigating. That is not done uh, without some uh, organization, and it is not taken lightly. So these people will be facing significant uh, criminal uh, uh, sentencing if they are convicted. And I can promise you to the perpetrators out there, we will find you. I'm Mike Valerio reporting. Now officials say power might not be fully restored until the end of the week. Well, let's get a look at your certified most accurate weather. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti has your forecast. Gary? Well, the skies have been mostly cloudy today. We had some light precipitation. That's kind of the trend that we're going to have for the upcoming week. Three things you need to know. Look for <laughs> lots of clouds. Maybe some sunshine on Wednesday, a little bit on Saturday, but other than that, just get used to the gray. Showers, mainly rain or a mix of rain and snow during the day that'll be warm enough that shouldn't stick to the ground. Uh, we'll have to keep an eye out for the nighttime hours for the potential for some light snow if the precipitation extends to when temperatures are below freezing. That's more likely to happen Thursday night into Friday. Uh, that could lead to some minor snow accumulations. And another system next week does bear some watching in the Monday night, Tuesday time frame. But before then, uh, temperatures are a little bit above average. The average high temperature right now is 35, drops to freezing 10 days from now, and notice our temperatures above normal for just about all of those days. As we take a look at ice vision, ice accumulation from uh, early this morning, there was a narrow band of some light freezing rain and freezing drizzle that caused some slippery road services from Crawford County through Sauk and Columbia counties and into uh, Dodge County. Everything was pretty much north of Dane County because temperatures were at or above freezing here. But as we take a look at high resolution radar now, precipitation is primarily in the form of some very light snow flurries. We'll see those off and on through the evening. They should probably end around midnight. A wider radar perspective doesn't really uh, appear that any of this is very heavy, so I don't expect any travel issues. Now, as we look at 
at the time period from Thursday night into Friday. One of the computer models indicates the potential for maybe a one to three inch snowfall across southern Wisconsin, maybe a couple of places a little bit more uh, heavier amounts out toward the Mississippi River. That's one computer model. Another computer model now, and this is just an update in the last hour. It was showing about a two to four inch swath near Madison. Now it's lifted that heavier snow closer to, toward Green Bay and again more likely in the one to two inch range and that's kind of my feeling right now. That's probably where we're going to end up. The storm for system for next week could be a stronger storm system with a lot more moisture. One of the computer models, the European computer model, shows the potential for a major winter storm across the central part of the Midwest. But the U.S. computer model? completely different. No snow across this area. We'd see mainly rain and the heavier snow would be farther to the north. So the confidence is high that there'll be a big storm system around then. Confidence is very low as to where the track of the heavier snow would be. I would guess it's going to be more likely to the north of us than around here. But again, we'll have to keep an eye on that as we head into next week. Planning your night, low of 27 in Verona, 27 in Dalyville, and 25 in Windsor across the rest of southern Wisconsin. Low of 30 in Janesville, 30, uh, 29 in uh, Monroe with mostly cloud Cloudy skies tomorrow, mostly cloudy skies. What else is new? Uh, a chance for some rain and snow showers. High temperature at 37. You can see planning your day, 9 a.m. We're getting close to freezing. Most of the light precipitation will occur during the afternoon, and that's when temperatures will be at or above freezing. So not looking for anything to stick to the ground. 40 for high on Wednesday. Rain late in the day on Thursday, changing to snow Thursday night into Friday. Against some minor accumulation there. The storm system early next week, mainly rain, then changing to snow on the back end into Tuesday and and temperatures closer to freezing as we head toward the end of next week. As we check out first warrant traffic right now, here's the view of the Beltline at Stoughton Road. Traffic moving pretty steadily in both directions. Not seeing any big traffic issues out there. Uh, Beltline looking pretty good. I-3990, 94 on the east side of Madison. No problems. About a 15 to 16 minute trip either way on the Beltline between University Avenue and the interstate. No problems on I-3990 from the Beltline to Janesville or US-12 middle to the Sauk City. Downtown to Sun Prairie, East Washington Avenue and US-151 takes you 19 minutes. That's your news for now for sworn traffic. All right, Gary, thank you. Final exams are right around the corner and Madison College is hosting some special events this week to help its students de-stress. Today, students got to visit with some furry friends from Dogs on Call. Organizers say playing with Jesse, Millie, Bailey, and Billy is a great way for students to take a minute for themselves and step away from the daily stressors as the semester comes to an end. We have exams, we have uh, presentations and projects. So I feel like we, everyone is stressed out in a zone. So if they see the dogs, they would, oh, I'm gonna step out of that zone and have some fun. Later this week, the campus will also, also host a free donut and hot chocolate day and hand out stressless wellness bags, which include face masks, bath bombs, and other stressless items. Just ahead, how a spike in respiratory illnesses is filling up hospitals in the U.S. and creating a shortage of certain pain medication. That's coming up next at 5. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. They've all been very impressed and, and several have joked that they're just going to come over and start using our bathroom instead of theirs now. <laughs> A new bath or shower from Mad City Baths makes a great impression when family and friends visit. Combine colors and patterns like Othello with cobblestone impression walls or bring the beauty of Italy to your shower with San Michele walls and a hexagonal pattern. Surfaces are infused with microban antimicrobial protection for easy cleaning. Plus, it's our end of year savings event. Take 75% off installation of a new bath or shower. Purchase now to get $750 in Mad City cash for future home improvements. Receive a free $75restaurant.com gift card with estimate. And call during this program for no interest and no payments till 2026. From Madison throughout South Central Wisconsin, call 608-729-4466. That's 608-729-4466. With dad's arthritis, he struggles with housework and bathing. So I called a grace. Yes, a grace. With their age at home service, dad gets the help he needs to stay independent at home. A grace. Caring every step of the way. 
Ready, Dad? All charged up. This holiday season, Ford wants to help you shine bright with a special offer on select Ford vehicles. Choose a vehicle in stock or simply place a custom order. Lock in your rate and you're protected. Even if rates go up before your order comes in. So much. And that's how Ford is helping you, I'm proud of you kids. shine bright. <laughs> This season, choose FlexBuy on a 2022 Escape or Edge SUV and get 0% financing for 66 months at your local Ford dealer and shine bright. There are still too many bad burgers out there. So Arby's is running that Wagyu Steakhouse burger back. Arby's, we have the meat. He was the local kid who loved to make people laugh. Now learn how Chris Farley found his comedic voice right here in his hometown. Madison Magazine takes you inside the early years before the world met Chris. Madison Magazine, online and on newsstands now. Want to know right now what the weather will be like tomorrow? Download the First Warren Weather app and you'll get my customized forecast for tonight and tomorrow. The First Warren Weather app. Get it now. Powered by News 3 Now. It's a great time for your next appliance upgrade. Now at Menards. Transform your home with top appliance brands like KitchenAid, Maytag, Whirlpool, Amana, and Criterion. Menards offers the lowest prices with the largest in-stock appliance selection. Ready to take home today. Breathe easier with DuPont air filters. They can reduce harmful airborne particles by up to 80%. Pick up an air filter for only $2.99 after rebate. Plus, a Menards gift card is always a great gift idea. Watching News 3 Now at 5. An urgent call is being made for federal health officials to help strained hospitals deal with the rise of respiratory illnesses in American children. Ivan Rodriguez has the latest. It's a nightmare for thousands and thousands and thousands. As children suffer from a surge in respiratory illnesses across the nation and parents face hospitals pushed to the brink, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer is calling on the federal government to step in and help. I've known people whose babies, only a few months old, are spending more than a week in the hospital because the babies are suffering from collapsed lungs and needed oxygen assistance to breathe. Their parents keep vigil next to the hospital bed. They don't go to sleep because they're worried their child will stop breathing and they'll miss it. In a letter obtained exclusively by CNN, the United States Health and Human Services Secretary tells governors around the country that the Biden administration stands ready to continue assisting you with resources, supplies, and personnel. HHS has the authority. We've given them that. Now, as pediatric hospital beds are in short supply, so are pain medicines like children's acetaminophen and ibuprofen. Johnson & Johnson saying in a statement they are experiencing high demand and are running production sites 24 hours a day, seven days a week to maximize production capacity. I'm Ivan Rodriguez reporting. And doctors suggest keeping babies away from adults who might have mild cold symptoms during the holiday season. They also say parents with children in daycare should be prepared for a higher risk. And they're reminding people to get those flu shots. If you haven't, there are RSV vaccine trials currently underway. And we'll have a final check of your first one forecast in just a moment. Don't go another year with that old, outdated bathtub. Replace it with a new walk-in shower or a new walk-in tub with relaxing hydrotherapy. With more than 50,000 satisfied customers and an A-plus rating with the BBB, homeowners trust Mad City Baths. With installations in as little as one day, backed with a double lifetime labor warranty. It's our end-of-year savings event. Receive 75% off installation. Plus, get $750 in Mad City cash for future home improvements and receive a free $75 restaurant.com gift card with in-home estimate. Remember, with our price lock guarantee, we'll guarantee your price for one year. Plus, last chance to call during this program for no interest and no payments till 2026. From Madison throughout South Central Wisconsin, call 608-729-4466. That's 608-729-4466. Wells Fargo lets you know where you stand with your FICO credit score. What if you knew where you stood with everything? Like your future in-laws. Hope you like cats. Uh, I hope your parents like me. <laughs> <laughs> They're whispering. The kid is like 
<laughs> Can they tell I'm allergic? Tears of joy. Welcome to the family. Phew. Like knowing where you stand? When it comes to your credit score, you can with Wells Fargo. Hey, there's my girl. Mm. Who's that? Life can be uncomfortable. Your home doesn't have to be. Whether you're looking for all the advanced features or something with a lower upfront cost, with Ream Heating Equipment, you can stay comfortable even in the most uncomfortable situations. Oh, come on! Yes, let's go! Feel the Woolers difference. Call Woolers Heating and Air Conditioning today. Serving Dane County for over 45 years. Massage Envy, where more people go to look and feel better. Buy $100 in Massage Envy gift cards and receive a free $20 promo card. Massage Envy, keep your body working. The original immersive Van Gogh exhibit is now open at Lighthouse Art Space Madison. Get lost in the sights and sounds of this completely spectacular, vivid, and breathtaking immersive art experience that ABC calls absolutely stunning. The New York Times raves that the original immersive Van Gogh exhibit is a must-see, lavish, artistic festival. Tickets available now at VanGoughMadison.com. woman had a day she'll never forget after both giving birth and winning the lottery. Brenda Gomez Hernandez from Concord delivered her baby girl November 9th. And just hours later, she won $100,000 in a Powerball drawing. Hernandez said her new baby brought her luck since she uses her children's birthdays to pick the numbers. After taxes, Hernandez will take home about $65 thousand dollars that'll pay for three years of daycare. diapers <laughs> diapers yeah well let's go to gary final check of the forecast well, lots of clouds out there uh live view from the edgewater sky cam not seeing any flurries here in madison but there are a few flurries out there on high resolution radar uh, really shouldn't am amount to anything as far as travel is concerned and you can see six hour future track radar shows nothing that would be significant as far as snow is concerned temperatures right now middle 30s 35 in edgerton 35 in cross plains 34 in madison 36 in janesville and 35 in Boston. Well, we're back in 30 minutes for News Now at 6. CBS Evening News is next.